All right, this is gonna be another quick tutorial for Scrivener. Today we're gonna to focus on character outlines as well as how you can use this program to sort of organize and gather visual inspiration, which I think is a side of the program, a really interesting side that a lot of people don't know exist, um, especially me. I didn't even discover it until a couple months ago. So, um, and again, we're gonna be using Hunger Games as an example, so if you haven't read these books, fair warning, there could be some spoilers in here. Um, so character outlines, let's start with these. Usually when you build um, a new project in Scrivener, if you start by choosing the fiction template, it will automatically give you this character section and this places section. And it will, um, you'll see, I've sort of built out all of, or not all, but many of the characters that make up the novel. When you choose fiction from the project templates, there will just be one in here and it's gonna be blank. But what it is is a worksheet that sort of helps you build out and detail information about any of the characters in your novel. Um, so let's look at Katniss first. All of these things over here that are bolded on the left, um, role in the story, age, physical description, etc. This is what the worksheet has, whereas all the stuff off to the right was blank, and I've filled it out to sort of um, detail out who Katniss is as a person, including you know her background, her conflicts throughout the story, additional notes, um, and you can use this these worksheets as little or as much as you want. I personally am not a big um, character worksheet writer. I fill them out a little bit at the end to sort of help me keep track of everything when I'm revising and also for future books if they're sequels, um, but I tend to not use these too much. But what I do like about them is that they're there if you choose to use them and they also give you the option of adding in a photo for each person. And that's sort of what we were seeing when we went back to corkboard mode. We could get a visual glimpse at all the people that made up the novel. And the same is true for places. Um, so you can visualize and you can also, when you go into each worksheet, sort of detail out um, things about the capital or District 12 or the arena. Um, but talking about visuals, let's move into how you can use Scrivener to sort of serve as um, a brainstorming tool for inspiration. Um, sometimes, I know I do at least when I write, is I have tons of visuals that inspire me, I have snippets from songs, I have pieces of the novel that actually come to me out of order and I want to write them down and sort of capture them. So let's say I'm brainstorming Katniss and I know, um, there, I know a bunch of things about her, I know a little bit about how she, you know, what she looks like, I have this idea of a song she's going to sing to Rue at one point in the novel, um, I know that there's this Mockingjay pin that she's going to get. Um, Let's say I don't want to fill out a character worksheet yet. I just want to brainstorm around this girl. This is where the collections come into play and are really, really useful. The binder, we talked about this last time, that's what we're looking at now. It's the actual novel, the parts of the novel, the chapters that make up the novel. It's where you're going to do a lot of your writing. But I like to use the collections section for um, a lot of the brainstorming stuff. So if, so if I click this, you'll notice the binder has slid down and there's a tab now for visuals or inspiration. I mean, we can call this whatever we want. But you'll notice in here, I've started a section for Katniss. And when I click on this, what you see here is a very loose inspiration board. Um, we are in corkboard mode, but it's not on that standard grid that we're used to seeing. It's really about just moving things around and visualizing and playing with ideas. And this is a feature I did not know existed until very, very recently. Scrivener has a standard grid view, down here there's two icons, grid, which is what we're used to seeing and what you've seen in the other tutorial that I did. And then there's this other view called freedom corkboard and that's what I'm playing with here. And this is where I'm pulling in visuals, I'm uh, writing down maybe a snippet of the novel actually came to me, maybe a song and I wanted to get it down and capture it. Um, just views of maybe what Katniss might look like before she's going up in the launch room. Maybe I have an idea for the pin. So again, a really fun way to visualize pieces of the novel that is not in that standard Scrivener structure of this happens, then this, then A, B, C, D. Um, one of the things that came up in the questions last time was how do I do this? How do I get my photos into Scrivener? I can't figure it out. Um, and it's actually pretty simple, but it is a little hidden. So let's talk about that really quickly. Um, Anytime you put a card on the corkboard, you usually get this index card view where there's a title and a synopsis and that's what you see. But there is the option to switch things over to have a photo. 
And that's as simple as over here where you see title and synopsis. There's this icon for an index card. If I don't wanna see the text on the card when I'm in corkboard mode, I can click this icon for image or photo and you're gonna to default to a view like these guys. So the Mockingjay pin, I have it set to show a photo. I did also write a description, a synopsis of what this thing is about, um, but I've got a photo displaying it here. And then just like when you're in the binder and you're working on things, um, you can always switch into different views and I can write whatever I want about Katniss sort of attached to this general Katniss inspiration. But really when I'm in collections, this is where I like to focus on just this very, very abstracted, um, non-grid structure way of visualizing and brainstorming and exploring what my makeup Katniss is a character. So again, that's sort of a different side of the Scrivener program. I think the big benefit is all of those photos that you're screenshotting online or snippets of lyrics that you're copying and pasting into a random Word document. Um, any of that stuff, I know um, you probably have a folder somewhere on your desktop or hard drive that's for inspiration. I love to do all of that in the collection section because I'm still so very close to the actual story. If I go back to the binder, I can go back to my characters. I can go back to chapter one and write, you know, and all of this information is just a click away. It's all in the same document. So a really, really powerful side to the program. Um, so that's all I have for today. I'm thinking next time I do a tutorial, I might focus on my process for revising in Scrivener. So I actually already have something drafted. How do I go about addressing editorial feedback? Um, so I'm thinking I might do that, but if you guys have anything else you're interested in knowing about, please leave me some notes in the comments and I will see what I can do to help. All right, thanks guys.